What is a slipper clutch? How does it work? And why should you care? I'll explain in this video from the MC Garage. Twenty years ago, slipper clutches were reserved for race bikes or bikes that have been modified for track riding, like I've done with my RC390 here. These days, however, you can find slipper clutches on all kinds of bikes, from performance machines like Ducati's Panigale, all the way down to beginner bikes like the Ninja 300. Shoot, slipper clutches even come on certain sport tours and cruisers. The whole idea behind a slipper clutch is that it helps prevent rear wheel chatter and engine over rev during hard engine braking caused by aggressive downshifts. On the track, a slipper clutch is helpful because downshifts are usually performed while you're on the front brake. So not only is there a lot of engine braking, taxing the rear tire and the suspension, but there's very little static load pushing the tire into the pavement. Rear wheel chatter, a skid, or a full-on crash can be the result. Obviously not a good thing. On the street, a slipper clutch might come into play if you downshift accidentally, if you have a sloppy downshift in the wet or on a slippery surface, or if you downshift one more time than you expected. Most people aren't gonna make those kind of mistakes, but if you do, a slipper clutch could save your bacon. So, keeping the bike's back end calm during engine braking is why a slipper clutch is beneficial. But how does it work? It's pretty simple, actually. This is the pressure plate and inner hub out of a standard non-slipper clutch. And these are the parts out of a slipper. The most common type of slipper clutch has ramps built into the inner hub and the pressure plate. And when the rear wheel begins driving the engine under deceleration, the ramps are forced together and they ride up each other. That pushes the pressure plate away from the clutch pack, which reduces clamping force on the clutch plates and allows them to slip past each other. It's the same action you'd get if you applied a little bit of pressure to the clutch lever, but with a slipper clutch, it happens automatically. So, no rev matching or clutch finesse required. A recent evolution of the slipper clutch is the slip and grip clutch. In addition to ramps that push the pressure plate out during hard engine braking, there are also ramps that force the plate in during acceleration. This puts additional pressure on the clutch plates to help prevent slippage. Since the grip ramps are forcing the clutch pack together, that means fewer or lighter clutch springs can be used, and that means you get a nice light lever pull. If your bike has a slipper clutch, you might be wondering what kind of oil you need to use. As I pointed out in the How a Clutch Works video, you just wanna make sure that, that oil says MA or MA2 on the back. That means it was designed for use in a motorcycle clutch. Also, steer clear of automotive oils that say energy conserving, because they're gonna cause your clutch to slip and not in a good way. And there you have it, an overview of the functionality and benefits of the modern slipper clutch. I hope you learned something, and of course, if you've got questions or comments, you know where to leave them. As always, I want you to subscribe, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.